Hi guys. Hi, hi everyone. This is what we're painting today. Who is ready? Hi guys, I'm gonna give everyone another minute uh, so everyone can join us and then we'll start. In the meantime, just make sure you have all your supplies ready, uh, maybe a glass of water or a glass of something else, a little snacky, whatever you need. Oh, I see everyone is from all different places. Awesome, guys. Hi. Welcome. Oh, lots of messages. All right. Yes, guys, I am excited to you. We're gonna start very shortly. I'm just making sure we have everyone so we don't uh, start before some people join us. So we'll give everyone another minute to join and now we'll start. All right, I think this is a good time for us to start. Welcome, guys. Welcome, everyone. Hi. If we haven't met before, my name is Vera. I'll be your instructor for today. And this is a painting. You can call him Grogo. You can call him Baby Yoda. You can call him the child or just the green cutie. However you call him, it's all good. And he's super adorable. And this is extremely hard painting, just so you know. So you're welcome. But I'm sure you guys, you guys can do this. I believe in you. Um, and we'll break it up in a very easy steps. Also, for those of you, who, for all of you who are wondering if this video will be available for later, absolutely. So video is not going anywhere. If today you're unprepared, but you really, really want to um, be able to do this painting, you will have ability to do that. You can do it anytime. The video will stay on our YouTube pretty much forever. So you're all good. You can do it tomorrow, you can do it this weekend, you can do it in a month or even in a year. You still will be good. It will remain right here. Hi, yes, awesome. All right, guys, so uh, let's go through our supplies and make sure we have everything that we need. First thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a canvas or something to paint on. I will be using pretty standard what do we usually use? 16 by 20 inch canvas. It's pretty big as you can see. So if you want to feel free to use smaller canvas, it doesn't have to be that big. This is pretty big. Um, generally, the smaller is a little bit uh, a little bit easier. So feel free to use that. But if you want to go big, go big, no problem. Also, you can use paper, cardboard, or any other surface, no problem at all. Now, next thing you're gonna need is a palette or something to mix your paint on. I have quite a few of them. I have this one. And I have this one, and I actually have more. Those are just reusable, no, sorry, those are not reusable. Those are paper plates that I made into reusable paper plates. They're not supposed to be. But you can use anything. You can use plastic, Tupperware lids, actual palette, whatever you have, it's all good. You're probably gonna need more than one just because there's tons of color mixing here. What else, what else, what else? We're gonna need water, very important. So grab some painting water. And we're gonna need a piece of cloth or a paper towel. I, whoops. I have a paper towel right here. So I'm gonna grab a piece of paper towel and use it. If we have reusable fabric cloth, that's even better for environment. 
All right, then we are going to need our paint. I will be using primary colors plus black and white. So primary colors are yellow, red, blue, and black and white, and I'll be mixing them into all shades of this. So I'll be mixing them into purples, beiges, greens, red, browns, all kinds of colors. Everything you can see here is mixed. So you're, you're free to mix along with me if you would like, or if you have a couple shades of pre-mixed green, Premix brown, maybe some red or orange, um, black and white, of course, and beige color. Feel free to grab that. You can use straight from the bottle if you have them as well. No problem. Whatever works. What else? We're going to need brushes. I will be using three different brushes, large, medium, and small. My large and my medium brush. So those two are square, as you can see. And... My small brush is a little pointy brush. All right, so if your guys' brushes are not square, this two, that's no problem. You don't even have to use the same brushes. This painting will work out with any brushes as long as you have a good small detailed brush. That's all that matters here. So just grab a good small detailed brush. It doesn't matter whether it's zero, one, two, or three. Number does not matter at all as long as you can get fine details with it based on the size of your canvas. So the bigger the canvas, the bigger the brush you can use, the smaller the canvas, the smaller the brushes you have to use. And for medium and large brush, doesn't matter the shape, whatever brushes you have, you are absolutely free to use them. It's just easier to have a couple different brushes. So feel free to grab a couple different brushes. And for those of you guys who are just joining us right now, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, this video will stay up on our Facebook, oh, sorry, not Facebook, on our YouTube page for rewatch. So if you would like to do this uh, this weekend or in a week or in a month, you absolutely can do that. Just go back to our YouTube channel and you'll see this video exactly where it is right now. So you're not going to miss it. Either you do it tonight or some other day, it's going to be here. All right, that's pretty much all that we need. Yay, we made it through. And guys, I will be checking chat to the best of my ability, but I know sometimes it gets pretty fast there. So if the messages are going really, really fast, again, I will do my best to respond to every message, but I can't promise that. So if you feel like your message is getting lost and it's very important for you to have the answer to it, just write it down and I apologize in advance if I miss any messages. All right, yay. And another thing, guys, this video is, you can't pause it since it's live right now. We're actually doing this in real time together. But once the video is recorded, only then you're going to have ability to pause it. So if that's something you're looking forward to, you can do this right after the live video is done and then use that ability to pause it. But right now, if you feel like you need to rewatch certain areas of this uh, recording, you can just scroll back, rewind, and rewatch it. That you're allowed to do while it's still um, live. All right, now, let's go through how this is gonna work. As I mentioned earlier, this is a very complex painting, very complex. So, we're gonna start with sketch, clearly. There's a lot going on, so let's get the sketch out of the way, and then we'll deal with the rest. We'll basically treat it as a coloring book in a way. So we're going to sketch starting with breaking down into very easy, manageable shapes and then bringing it into a proper shape. So first it's going to be more like uh, circles and triangles, and then we're going to smooth them up, add the lines and so on and turn this into this. And only, only, only after our sketch is done, we're going to move on to the actual painting and we'll start with the background. We'll do our background very first. After that, we're going to do our coat and only after that we're going to move on to our face and then we're going to merge them so all these dark lines that you can see here are going to be done very last so we're going to work from light to dark if that makes sense okay i see a lot of you saying you can pause it yay good i had no idea that you can pause it so that's great i'm very happy to hear this and yes you guys can totally rewind and watch certain parts of it all right now bring your canvases we're gonna start if you guys 
Have your pencils, grab your pencils, please sketch with your pencils. It's always best because then you can erase any lines that you don't like so you're not stuck with them. If you don't have pencil, that's okay. It's not a big deal. You can still do this, just use very light paint. So I'm gonna sketch with a very light gray paint. Well, ideally you would wanna sketch with a very light gray paint if you're using paint. I'll sketch with a little bit darker paint just so you can see it better. So I'm gonna grab my small brush and I'm gonna make some gray paint. So I'm gonna grab some white, some black, mix them up. So here's my gray. And again, if you guys were, um, if you guys had pencils, please use pencils. They are definitely more ideal for this. Now we're gonna decide how wide is our head going to be. I'm gonna bring this one closer so we have them side by side actually. So do you see? The same with canvases. Now we're gonna decide how wide is the head is gonna be. And I would say it's about one third of the uh, width of the canvas, about, more or less. I think it's a little bit less actually than one third, but around one third. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put two dots to represent where the ends of the head are going to be. So I'm gonna, and as far as height, I would say uh, maybe one fourth from the top. So if the list, this is half, let's say, this would be about one fourth, right? So one fourth, one fourth, one third, in a way. Hope that makes sense. And we're gonna put two dots. You see I did two dots, one here, one here. This is for the sides of the head. So one fourth, one third. And once you have that, you're gonna connect those two lines, uh, sorry, those two dots. So here is the top of the head for our baby Yoda slash the child slash Grogo. And guys, when you have it, just give me thumbs up in chat, say good to go, yes, ready, and so on. And I'll show you next line. I kind of want you to follow me line by line here, because again, it's pretty complex. Now, we're gonna go a little lower, and we will let this section here. Again, we're not gonna do this whole round first. We'll do the top the bottom, and then we'll connect them. So how much lower do you go? I would say maybe a couple inches. So I'm gonna put two dots again. You see a couple inches under my sides. And then, but this time it's not gonna be as smooth around it, it's gonna have a bit of a chin. So do you see it's a bit of a pointier chin right here? You see, I gave him a little bit of a pointy chin. So not exactly like on top. And guys, I see some comments about tracing. If you have something to trace, absolutely go for it. You can trace it if you want it. Okay, now I'm gonna connect the top to the bottom.
All right, after this, we're gonna move on to our ears. So we're gonna start by putting just the top of the ear. And you see it goes almost to the edge of the canvas. Not the very edge, you still will leave a little bit of space here, but pretty far. And it goes slightly on the angle. So it's not gonna go straight. So I'm gonna go up, it's slightly gonna go down. So from here, do you remember that line that we put first? So from those lines, we're gonna put those lines out. From those dots, we're gonna put the lines out. So that's one line. You see, it's not straight. It doesn't start from the very top. It starts from those two first dots that we put. We put it on the side. And then I'm gonna do exact same line on the other side as well. And then we will do the bottom of our ears. As you can see, the bottom of our ears is going to start from here, from that second dot. Do you remember the two dots that we put on the bottom? So from those dots out, that's where you're going to add um, the bottom line. So here's our bottom line. And now we're gonna add this line, so inner line, to separate the top of the ear from the inside the ear. And I would say it's gonna go, not right in the middle, as you can see, it's gonna go a little bit higher than that. And it's gonna start with a slight curve. You see there's a slight curve right here. So this is our inner line. In the end of the ears, I'm not doing a curl. If you want to add a curl, you can absolutely. And then I'm going to mirror that onto the other side. And once you guys have this, give me thumbs up. I'm going to give you all a minute to catch up to make sure you have your head ready. And only after that, we're going to move on to the other parts. Just make sure you have your head ready first. Good to go. Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This is what it's gonna look like in the end. Isn't he cute? Cutest thing ever. Yes, great. Awesome. All right, guys, after that, we're going to position those massive eyes. That's what's coming next. But first, let's take a look here and see where they are positioned on this paint. Don't they look kind of in the middle, right? If you look vertically, it's about halfway, right? 
if you look horizontally, I would say if you divide it into half right here, if you know where the middle is, you can even put a dot in the middle. Let's put a dot in the middle just to help ourselves. So right in the middle, just to help you know. So this would be our dot in the middle. Do you see those uh, halves? They would be right in the middle of each half. So if you see this half, your eye positioned on the same distance from the middle and from the edge. The same with this eye. And here it is in the middle as well. And so they are not exactly circular. So let me show you. And guys, the bigger you make them, the better. So I'm gonna decide where the ends of my eyes are gonna be first. So this is half, right? I have half right here. Now I'm gonna position my eye right in the middle of that half. So this probably is a good place to position on the ends of the eye. Here is one very big eye right there. All right, now I'm gonna add second eye on the other side, exactly the same, ideally. That's where pencil has a lot of advantages because if something goes wrong or you don't like it, you can just erase it. If you do it with paint, you're, you'll have to wait to erase it. Two eyes for the baby. All right, guys, I'm going to give you another minute quickly to catch up. All right, I see some done, that's good. Now after that, we're gonna add our tiny little nose. So do you see how small the nose is? So, so tiny. So now let's discuss where we're gonna position that tiny little nose. Do you see where the um, eyes end? So if I put the line, if I put my brush actually, right at the bottom of the eyes, that's pretty much where the nose is gonna be positioned. Do you see, it's kind of on the same line, the bottom of the eyes and the nose. Maybe it's a little bit lower, the nostrils. And where, how far do we go to the sides? I would say right in the middle of this middle part. So if this is the, the part between the eyes, so it's gonna go right in the middle. It's gonna be about one third of that midsection. I know, so small. So here is where my eyes, um, here's how low my eyes go, right? So I'm gonna position my nose in around the same line. And I'm gonna start by putting two nostrils. Sorry, not nostrils, the sides of the nose first. 
and I'll add two nostrils. He has a really tiny nose, that baby Yoda. Slash Grogu, slash, slash the child. I'm gonna cover this uh, dot now, just because it gets confusing a little. We don't really need it anymore. So we can get rid of it now. All right, and once we have that, we're gonna move to the mouth. I would say, again, let's look back at this painting and see where the mouth is positioned. So here's the nose, right? Here's the chin. I would say it's a little bit higher than midpoint. So midpoint between the chin and the nose would be here. You see our mouth is slightly higher than midpoint and how big it is? Not very big, it goes pretty much so do you see the dots, the beginnings of the eyes are right here. And the mouth goes a little bit further than the beginning of the eye. And the shape of the mouth is not a straight line. It's more like, actually, let me show you on the back of this one. It's more like this. So do you see, it's not, it's not a straight line. It's more like up, down, up, down. All right, now I'm gonna position the mouth on my actual painting. And again, remember, either do sketch with your pencil or a light gray paint, much lighter than mine. I'm only going this dark so you guys can see it better. It is not it's better not to go as dark as I have it. All right, so I'm gonna start from the middle. Pop it right here, right here. I'm gonna quickly cover up extra lines of my sketch that are unnecessary. Because as you know, I'm sketching with paint. But if you're using pencil, you can always just erase extra lines, right? So my lines, my extra lines don't confuse you guys. Yes, he is already taking form. All right, now, so we add, have the main lines on the face, right? Now we're gonna add the supporting lines. There are lots of supporting lines that are gonna shape him properly. So all the wrinkles on top, all the wrinkles around the eyes, underneath the eyes, some around the mouth and a nose here. So we're gonna do all that. Oh yeah, Santa head on him is a great idea. That is brilliant. So the first two supporting lines that we're gonna start with are gonna be around the eyes. So do you see those? Those are gonna be the first ones. And um, where are they gonna be? So do you see there's a bit of smaller distance right here from the corner of the eye to the line is smaller and then gradually gets bigger, 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 bigger and then it gets biggest here, and then it about continues staying the same, I would say, all the way to the side. So big distance, big distance, big distance, smaller, 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 smaller. If this makes sense. And we're gonna do that on both sides. So this is our eye right here. Uh, it's probably gonna be like this. Uh, 
that exact same thing on the other side. And then we're gonna add two lines underneath the eyes as well. They're gonna be more of even line in a way, um, and it's gonna be smaller distance. Thanks, Lauren. You too. All right. Now, we're going to add two more lines on top. Now, we're going to move on to the wrinkles. So, um, they're gonna be weird shaped. So let me just do it and you guys follow me on this. It is hard, guys. I warned you, this is a toughie. It's a tough painting, so you're doing a great job. And yes, it is gonna take a while. The sketch on this painting is like the hardest part, so it will take a while. So be warned. And video always will stay up here, so if you can't do the whole thing today, it's not a problem, you can always finish it later, but it is best to do a good sketch right away. Now we're going to add the middle line here. And I know, guys, this may not make sense right now, but it will come together. And then I'll add a couple lines on top here. All right, a couple more lines and we are done with the face. So I'm gonna add two flicks around the nose, one from here out, one from here out, and then a couple flick around the mouth as well. So one from here out, and one from here out. And those are kind of gonna merge into his cheeks. And then a little flick under the chin right here. You can add it, and this should be good.
Okay, we're almost done with the face. I know, he doesn't look like a grandpa, but that's okay. You know why? It's because they're all the lines look super harsh right now. Once we're done with it, they're going to look as light as there. So they're not going to be as dominant. You're going to have a bright, dark eyes. You're going to have big contrast right here around the eyes, right? So all the lines are going to be very, very soft. Right now, they're the only thing on a camera. So they look darker than what they will be in the end. I know, they all look really old right now, and that's perfectly normal. So if your looks like a very, very old grandpa, you're on the right track. Now the eyes. So we're going to um, add a circle inside. So it's going to be like a big circle, right? So we're just going to add a piece right here and a piece right here. And do you see now we have a circle inside? If yours looks like regular Yoda, that's a good sign. You are just where you need to be. They're supposed to look very old right now, so you're doing a great job. He's only going to start looking like a baby once we add that green on the um, skin tone. We'll add the dark big eyes and then the glaring eyes, and that's where he's going to start looking like a baby. And that's pretty much it on the face, guys. We are through with the hardest part of this painting. So congrats on that. Zombie Yoda, that's hilarious. He could be. He could be. It's very easy, I assume, to turn a Yoda into a zombie. He's already green, right? Yes, guys, if you're wondering who is typing, this is Liesl typing. So she is there if you have any questions for her as well, or if you just want to say hi, Lisa. Um, if you're wondering how to do the ears or any part, you can just rewind the video to the part where we do it. So, which is great. YouTube allows you to rewind and rewatch certain areas. Or if you guys just joining us right now, feel free to rewind and start watching this from the beginning. So you don't miss all the sketch. All right, I see a couple thumbs ups. Once I get a couple more thumbs ups, we'll move on to the rest of the body sketch. And the rest is so much easier, guys. This was the hardest. So you did a great job. All right, I'm gonna wait for a couple more thumbs ups and good to those and then we'll move. Yes, I see lots of good to goes and readies. Awesome job, guys. Yes, lots of thumbs ups. That's good. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, amazing. Getting some water. Sure, get some water. No problem. Okay, I see lots of thumbs ups. So that's awesome. Now we're going to move on to the body. We can start with a scarf. So we're going to, well, it's not a scarf. It's like this um, top part of the jacket, right? So that's what we're going to do first. Again, I'm going to use my gray paint. And I'm going to start by sketching this part. Actually, I'm going to start by sketching the line right here. So we'll put a line right here. 
You see? Right under. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. That is great. Okay, so did you do the line? So after we have the line, I'm going to um, break it up right here. Let a bump here. Break it up at this side. Half of the scarf. All right, and now I'm going to move on to the other side. Well, that's the second half of this top part. And a couple lines right here. Okay guys, now we're going to add a couple more lines. So the next line I'm going to add is the sleeve. So I'm going to go right here, not all the way to the end. I'll be sure you closer actually. Yay, I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. Now I'm going to add the side. So the side, this line between the hand and the body. And then I'll add another line on a sleeve. Awesome. After that, I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to start by putting sleeve. Again, not all the way to the end. And then I'm going to put a line between the hand and the body. In the sleeve and the body. And then another line on a sleeve. I can show you the other one in a second. Let me quickly finish uh, the lines here and then I'll show you the original one. All right, and then I'm gonna put two lines in the middle. So once over here, don't make them straight, make them intentionally not very straight.
And then I'm going to add a hand here. I'm just going to add something that looks like this. It's super simple on this side. So let's make it a little bigger. And on this side, I'm going to bring the hand out into the edge of the canvas. So I'm just going to do this and assume that the hand is there. And that is pretty much all for the baby Yoda sketch slash girl girl slash uh, the child. So for those who are asking to see the painted version, here he is. Our little green cutie. All right, so guys, once you have it, again, give me a thumbs up. I'm going to give you a minute to make sure all of us are on the same page here because I know it's a lot of work. And um, someone is wondering if it's going to be up to three hours. It can be. This is a difficult painting. It is what it is, guys. And you don't have to do it in one sitting. You can do it in two sittings. You can do it in three sittings. Absolutely. That's your choice. Video is not going anywhere. And it is, as I mentioned from the beginning, it's a tough one. So uh, good for you for even attempting this, guys. I am super, super proud of you. Yes, no worries. Or if you have to eat dinner, you can always pause it and resume it whenever you're ready. All right, I see lots of thumbs up, which is great. I am glad we're all keeping up with the speed. So now we're going to start coloring and we're going to move on to our background. So the very first thing we're going to do here is our background. Now, as you can see, the background is a combination of colors here. There is this beige color, there's light brown, there's dark brown, there's green, and there's very dark green. So I would say it's a combination of green, brown, and beige. And beige, again, is like just brown with a little bit of white and yellow. So if you have pre-mixed brown, put it on your palette. If you don't have pre-mixed brown, put red, blue, white, and black all on your palette and we will mix it. I will be mixing, so I'm gonna put a red, yellow, blue, black, and white. So pretty much all my colors on my palette. And I'll show you how to mix them. If you have pre-mixed greens or beige or browns, you're free to use them as well. And I'm gonna grab my big painting here. Okay, so I'm gonna by starting mixing my um, beige color. Actually, let's mix dark brown first. Let's have let's mix a lot of dark brown, so then we can mix it with other colors. Um, okay, so we're gonna start by mixing equal parts red and yellow. Do you see I scooped lots of lots of yellow on my brush? Now I'm gonna scoop lots of red and mix them up about equal parts, I would say, red and yellow. Now, once we have that, you see it looks like very dark, bright orange. And then to this color, you can add little by little black. So just grab a little bit first, mix it in, see what happens. And then if it wasn't enough, grab a bit more and so on. But don't grab a lot right away because black is a powerful color. It can overtake everything and turn it into black. Here, this is perfect. This is beautiful brown. Let me show it to you. Do you see? It's nice, really nice brown. Again, if you had premix brown, you don't have to mix it only for those of us who are only using primary colors. And after we have this, we're going to start actually mixing colors that we're going to use. So my first color is not going to be brown. I mix my brown. I'm going to leave it aside and I'm going to move on to mixing my first color. So don't use your brown for now. Well, don't use all of it. Put it aside. So my first color is going to be that beigey bright color. This one. How I'm going to do this, I'm going to grab a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, mix them up. So a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. You see it turn into this nice 
beige and now to that color I'm going to add yellow to make it a bit more on a yellow side, a bit brighter, a bit more, um, not so subtle. No way, you see this color? This is the color I am going to use. And I'm gonna start by um, positioning in a couple spots. So the other colors I'm gonna overlap and put around it. So it's gonna be a lot of, a lot like a patchy background with a mix in, in between. So I'm gonna start here. You can position, you can do your brush strokes in, on any angle. This is the angle that I'm gonna do my brush strokes on. If some of this color goes on to the face or um, over the outline, that's okay. I would say don't leave any space between. Do you see how I colored and the line? So you cannot leave any white space between the outside color, the background and the line. If it goes a little over your line, not a big deal as long as you don't lose your line. And then I'm going to spread it a bit here, a bit there. And you can always add a bit more of this color because the rest of the colors are going to overlap on this. So in the end, you're going to see way less of it than what you see now. I'll go add a bit here too. And guys, I personally water down my paint a little bit. So I would dip my brush in the water first and then I'll dip it in paint to water down my paint. And to keep my brush wet, I find that it works much better, especially when we cover large areas. But it's up to you. Just a little tip in case you wanted to do the same. I'll add some right here. Maybe right here. All right, so this is our first color. Once we have it, we're gonna move on to our second color. And second color is gonna be brown. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash my brush and to the same color that I just used, I'm gonna add a bit of brown. So it's not the darkest brown, that's my darkest brown, right, that I mix. Doesn't have any white. This one has white, so this is this color with just a bit of brown. You see it's darker, it's like a medium brown, but still not very dark. And then I'm gonna go with this color and I will add it around um, this beigey areas and I'm gonna overlap my beigey areas a little bit. Do you see how I overlapped it and lightly um, added it over? So what do you do? You add it first on the white canvas and then very, very lightly you add it over the place where uh, the two colors connect. So just scraping the surface of your canvas, you go over this beige color. And there are certain areas where you can adjust this color. It doesn't have to be connected to beige color, but if it is, then you're gonna overlap it on a beige color. So I'm gonna add some right here. You see my brush strokes are quite big, right? I'll definitely add some right here. And let's add some on the other side as well. Oh yeah, your own background is good too. Whatever works for you guys.
right? So I have two colors and do you see they seamlessly blend into each other. Now I'm gonna go darker and go with straight brown. Do you remember that brown that we made first? So this is the color I'm gonna grab. So the darkest brown, not mixed with anything. And I'm gonna go a little bit um, right here. This is actually the easiest to do this step is fast. Because if you do it fast, uh, then your paint stays wet. And it's much, much easier blend on a wet paint. The paint dries, it's still doable. It's just a little harder for you to blend on a dry paint. Let us up right here. It's like you find the next patch and put it on, next patch and put it on, and so on. Just do it very, very lightly. Don't use too much paint on your brush and don't push hard on your brush. It's like you're scraping the surface of a canvas to have that layering, that very transparent layering. So your colors merge into each other nicely. I'm gonna add some right here as well. You could totally overlap. Do you see there was not an empty section? But I still added it because I thought it would look nice. So you could totally overlap other colors too. So I'm gonna continue adding and I'll add a little bit right here too. And I'll go all the way to the bottom of this color here. All right, and I'm gonna add a bit of this on the other side too, and then I'm gonna move to greens. All right, and now I'm going to move on to my green paint. So the first green that I'm gonna make is brownie green. So it's gonna have some brown and um, some green in it. How I'm gonna do this, if you have pre-mix green, what you could do, just grab a bit of brown, mix it with green, and you will get the right color. If not, I'm gonna grab some yellow, Add it into, so I'm not gonna use mix all my brown, I'm still gonna reserve some of it, but I'm gonna grab some brown and mix into it some yellow and some blue. Blue, because what makes green? Yellow and blue, that's right. So we just need yellow and blue and a smidge of brown in it. This is about the color that I'm gonna use first. You see, it's, it is still green, but it's muted green. It's not a vibrant green. It's very more like a military green in a way. And with this green, I'm gonna go to this corner. Again, I'm gonna overlap some as well. So you see I covered first the area that was completely white. 
just empty canvas and then I overlapped it a bit on the other colors. And here, I'm pretty much gonna color this whole corner with this color. Again, I'm color as you can see, I'm coloring this empty canvas first. And only once I color the empty canvas, I'm gonna overlap it a bit onto the beiges and the browns. And I'm gonna add a bit of it somewhere around here as well. Look for this spot and just overlap some here as well. All right, so I'm gonna go right here. And again, um, if you go a little bit over your lines, not a problem, just make sure you don't leave any space between your lines and the background. It's very important here. Now let's add a bit of green there, just so we have it everywhere, right? Wouldn't hurt. Awesome. And now I'm gonna add the darkest green. So what I'm gonna do to the same color I just used, I'm gonna add a bit more yellow, a bit more blue. So do you see it gets more vibrant green versus the green I just used before. Way more vibrant. And now to this color, I'm gonna add just the tiniest smidge of black. So not a lot, if you add a lot of black, it's gonna make it dimmer again. But you wanna keep it vibrant. So just add a bit more blue maybe and a tiny touch of black. And with this color, we're gonna add last shade of green anywhere you want. I would say just a couple uh, flicks here and there, wherever you want it to be. I am not adding much of it for sure. Yeah, we'll add it here too. Okay, so this is our background. We are done with our background. Um, there will be a couple swirlies that we will add on it on top, but that would be done much, much later after we finish actually the whole painting. Do you see there are a couple swirlies here? A couple um, very transparent, light white ones, and some green and some black, but those are gonna be done very, very last. So we don't need to worry about that right now. After we have our background, we're gonna move on to our jacket. So guys, uh, let me know, give me a thumbs up in chat as soon as you have this background, and then I'll show you what to do next. We'll go on to our jacket for our child.
His eyes are shining because that's the glare. Oh good, welcome guys who are just joining us now. Welcome everyone. If you want to start from the beginning, feel free to rewind it to the beginning. You have that ability, so you don't have to uh, try to just guess what happened before you joined. We're just over an hour in. We're actually going at a very good pace, guys. So good job, everyone. Yes, ready. Awesome. Awesome, I see a couple of varieties, that's good. Awesome, more thumbs up, that's amazing. Guys, if your colors are not exactly like mine, that's not a problem at all. You don't have to be precise with colors. As long as he's green and background has green, beige, and brown, you're good. If it's not the same shades, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. All right, so now I'm going to wash my brush, my large one. And I'll put it aside, and that's pretty much it. I am not going to be using it anymore. Max brush that I'm going to use is my medium brush. So this one, done. Putting it away. And taking the medium brush, this one. And I'm going to move on to the light beige jacket. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to color the whole jacket with just one same color. And that's going to be a smidge of brown and a lot of white. Let me show you. So I'm going to grab lots and lots of white here. And then I'm going to grab, you see I added some weight. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of my brown that I mixed, just a regular brown. And mix them up. Any shade is good as long as it's light beige. I wouldn't recommend going medium or dark here. Unless you're going for a totally different look, then it's fine. Let's see, how is this one? Could be a little darker. Let's go a little darker. Yeah, let's try this one. Oh yeah, I like this one. So I'm gonna go with this color. So what I did is I mixed a touch of brown with lots and lots of white, and then I added another tiny smidge of yellow, very, very small smidge of yellow, to just give it a bit of hint of this warm, yellowy tone. Yes, this will stay on YouTube. If you guys missed it or if you have to go somewhere, not a problem. This will remain exactly where it is right now. So now with this color, we're going to color this whole jacket. However, so let me tell you about the lines. Do you see, if I go straight over my lines, you can still see them right through. If your lines are small and not very visible and your paint is thick and non-transparent, don't go over your lines. So if you feel like you're going to lose your lines if you go over them, then don't go over them. Avoid them. If you feel like you have a situation like I have here, that your lines are totally visible right through your paint and you're not gonna lose them, then you're allowed to go right over them. Totally up to you guys.
All right, so here is the jacket fully filled in. Now in a second, we're gonna start adding layers of different colors. However, I'm gonna give you guys a second to do this first. So once you have it, please give me a couple thumbs up. Let me know that you're good to go in chat and then we'll move on to our next step here. And here is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. So do you see we are way on our way here? Ta-da! What kind of paint are I using? I'm using student grade acrylic paint. This is the brand I'm currently using, just so you know, because I know that's a very common question. But if you guys are interested in what kind of paint to buy, this is a good one for sure, 100%. I definitely recommend it. Um, if you're looking for more individual kits, let us know. We actually know where to get a good individual kit as well that have canvases, brushes, and paint. Um, I can let you know that in comments here in chat if anyone's interested. And this one we just buy in curries if you're interested in a large jars. All right, I see a couple thumbs up, which is great which means we can probably move to our next step. And for next step, we're gonna use brown again. So we're gonna need brown. I will mix my brown again because I don't have any brown left. I used up all my brown, so I will need more. If you have pre-mixed brown, good for you. Just make sure you have some on your palette. And if not, you can mix some brown along with me. And that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna start by mixing another batch of brown. So I'm gonna grab some yellow. Put it here, then I'm gonna grab same, but equal parts, yellow and red. Mix them up. And then to all that, I'm gonna start adding black little by little and mixing it in. All right, this is pretty good. This is quite brown. I'm happy with this color. So I'm gonna keep it. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna grab the smidge of that brown, just a little bit, and I will add it into this beige that I just used to make a darker color. So do you see it's not dark brown. It's just medium brown or darker beige in a way. And that is the color we're gonna use next. So with this color, we're gonna do the shading. So I'm gonna start by adding the darker, this darker color very lightly around here. And underneath here. So this one is on top of this one, right? So this one, it's not gonna have shading, but this one, the one on the bottom, will have a bit of it. And now right away, I'm actually gonna wash my medium brush, lightly dry it on a cloth, and with a clean wet brush, I'm gonna go over it and blend it a bit better. So you see I'm just going with a clean, slightly wet brush, and it's making everything smoother, making all those brush strokes smoother. So again, wash your brush, lightly dab it on a cloth or a paper towel, just make it all smoother. Uh, 
and then I'm gonna add shading on the other parts too. So then I'm gonna refill my brush with this light brown. And I'm gonna go underneath here. Let some shading there. And I'll let some shading underneath here as well. Right here from this line out. On this line out. And a little bit inside on top. And again, I'm going to wash off my brush right away, lightly dab it on a cloth, and I'm going to go with a clean, slightly wet brush. I'm going to make all those smoother. But you have to do it while your paint is still super wet. You can't really wait if you want to make it smoother. If you don't want to make it smoother, you can actually keep it like that. It looks nice too. But if you prefer a smoother look, you have to do it right away. All right. But now I'm going to do a bit more shading right here. So from this line out onto the arm piece and right here. And the same thing on the other side. So the arm out. And a little bit right here. And again, I'm gonna wash my brush right away, right on the cloth or paper towel. And with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm just gonna go and make all those lines smoother. Ta-da! This is our second layer on the jacket. And again, once you guys have it, please give me thumbs up and then I'll show you our next color here. And guys, after we're done, please feel free to share your paintings with us. We absolutely love to see how they turned out and we would love to see how all of them turned out and one way you could do it is you can take a photo and you can post them on our Facebook page. So you can technically post them anywhere on our Facebook page, uh, anywhere you want, but a good place to, would be um, on event page underneath a post. I will make a post after we're done that will have just a thank you note and there will be a comment enabled so you can take a photo and post it there and that way everyone else who participated in this event would be able to see how it turned out as well. So it's a pretty cool feature because then it just feels like we were all in the same room doing it all together. Literally the best feeling ever. So if you want that, we would love to see it. If not, if you're shy, that's okay too. You don't have to share it. But again, that would be appreciated because we love seeing it. Yes, thumbs up. Good. How is everyone else doing? Oh, 
Awesome. Ready, ready. Thumbs up. Good. Great. I am happy to see this, guys. After this, next color we're going to move on to is going to be um, almost black. It's going to be like a very, very dark brown uh, that looks almost black. So what I'm going to do, do you remember my batch of brown that I made here? I'm going to grab a smidge of it, put it on the side, and now to that smidge, I'm going to add even more black. So I'm going to make it quite dark. But still, it should be very, very dark brown, not black. See, it's very dark, but still is brown. And then I'll take just a little bit of that color on my small brush, actually. I'll water it down a little. I find that it's easier to work. So I'm going to grab it on my small brush, and I'm going to start shading. So I'll add a little bit of it here on top. So I'm gonna use two brushes at the same time. Do you see I added a line there on top in this color? So now I'm gonna grab a clean medium brush, slightly wet, and I'm gonna smudge the bottom side of this. So the top side, I want it to stay crisp, but the bottom side, I'm gonna smudge it. Do you see? That smoothness, that's what you want. And you're going to do that for every breast stroke. So now I'm going to go underneath. I will go here. Add some brown there. It's dark, dark, almost black kind of brown. All right, and again, right away, I wash off my medium brush. It's nice and clean, and I'm not going to swatch the outer side, only the inner side. So this one, the inner one. You see, I just smudged that. And with whatever is now on my brush, so my brush is slightly dirty now. So with this, I'm just going to add a smidge of it right here. I'm not really smudging my top line. Just setting a tiny, tiny smidge underneath. And then I'm going to continue doing that. So I'm going to refill my brush again. And I'm going to go here as my set next line right here. And I'll add a line here. And a line here. And a line here. And again, I'm going to wash off my brush, my medium brush, uh, and with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm going to smudge, but only on our right side. So this side, I'm not touching. It should stay crisp. But this side, I'm smudging it all and spreading it. And this one I'm going to smudge and spread to the bottom on the side. And now to this line. So I'm not going to add as strong. This is the darkest point, right? So the rest are not going to be as strong and as dark. So next one I'm going to add right here. Just a bit, and maybe right here, just a bit too. And let's go all the way down on our hand. Maybe a line right here too. And now again, let's wash our brush. Grab clean, wet, medium brush and smudge it all. Again, I'm not going on the upper side here. I'm smudging only the bottom. And I'm not going to this 
uh, body side. I'm smudging it towards the hand. Ta-da! And guys, remember, if you need a bit more time, feel free to pause it, or you can even do this in a couple settings. That's totally fine, too. Or you can rewind it back if you need to see certain parts of it again. All that are good options. Okay, I'm going to continue going with my dark brown lines. I'm going to go here now. Okay, so let's smudge them. Again, only towards the arm. Christopher, me too. We will get to the head as soon as we're done with the body. All right, now, we finish up right here. Just a couple more lines and I'll add a couple in between, but I'm not gonna smudge those. All right, now I'm gonna smudge the outside. But not the inside, I'm keeping the inside exactly this way. All right, our body is almost done. The only thing that's left for our body is to add a white highlight. So again, once you guys have this, uh, give me thumbs up in chat, in comments here, saying good to go, and then I'll show you white highlights on the body, and then we're moving to the head. And guys, again, we're moving at a wonderful pace here because this is a complicated painting, as I warned you. It's probably one of the hardest uh, we have ever done. We have done quite a few hard ones, but this one will definitely make a top 10. So... Be gentle with yourselves, it does take a while. And again, if you need a bit more time, feel free to just pause it or rewind if you would like to see certain areas again. I am going at my pace and this may not be your pace. You might find it a bit too fast for you if you're really trying to get into all those details. Or you might be anxiously waiting for the other parts and that's okay too. So as soon as I get a couple thumbs ups, We'll move on to our highlights on the body. Ready, yes, good. Ready, 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 even better. And here's our finished baby. So do you see we're getting there? We're definitely on a good track here. Mm. 
not ready. If you guys are not ready, feel free to pause it or feel free to uh, rewind it a little. All those are good options. All right, I see lots of good to goes, which is amazing. Happy to see that, guys. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of my white paint on my medium brush. And I will add some white highlights right here. I'm going to add a couple white highlights right here. And you can even um, smudge them the way we've done with other colors, or you don't have to. It really depends on what look you prefer. If you prefer to have your white a bit more visible, you don't have to smudge them. Just layer it on very lightly, so just don't blob it on and then you'll be fine. Alternatively, if you would like to have it lighter and more um, smoother in a way and more blended, feel free to smudge it the same way so you can just put your white now and then grab a clean brush, the same brush, just wash it off and grab a clean brush and go ahead and smudge it. And that way it's going to be a bit softer. So either one is fine. Whichever one you prefer is all good. So I add a highlight there. I'm going to add some on top of this arm here. So right here, here. And you can make some texture on the fabric too with this. And right here. So I have my highlights. Now I will smudge some of them. So I washed off my brush. I dried it on a paper towel and I'm going to go ahead and just go over that white with a clean wet brush to make it a bit smoother in certain areas. Not everywhere. Some areas I'm not going to touch. I'm okay with that in certain areas that turn out a bit blobbier. I'm going to go ahead and smudge it. But you have to do it fast. You kind of have to do it on white. Once it dries, this little trick does not work. Oh yeah, that's a great idea for a Christmas gift, guys. Absolutely. <laughs> I would make a really good gift. Good face. Yes, I am glad to hear that. All right, guys, I think this is awesome. I think we're good to move on to our head because this looks great, this looks done. I hope all of you are ready. If not, again, feel free to pause it or feel free to just like rewind a little bit. So now let's talk about our head. The first parts that we're gonna do are going to be the ears. So the inside of the ears, do you see this light part? So it's gonna be that the same similar beige, whichever beige you have. And then from that beige, we're gonna transition into the pinker color here. Once we have that, only then we're gonna move on to the green um, base of our face. So again, I'm gonna start with my medium brush. So I'll wash it off. I'll make beige. Again, what I still actually have beige from the coat and I can use that as a base. Um, if you don't have beige from the coat or any beige on a palette, what you do is you take a bit of white, a little bit of brown, mix them up, mostly white, maybe like uh, a tiny smidge of brown to make a light beige. And then feel free to add a little bit more yellow because we want it more on like a yellower side. So to this beige that I have now, 
this one. You see it's very light, the same as I used on a coat. I'm just gonna add another smidge of yellow to make it a bit more yellow. And now I'm gonna go right here. So not all the way down, leave a little bit of space there. So I'll cover here. And you see I'm not leaving too much space on top either because the rest I can overlap over this color. So I don't really need to leave any empty space there. Even the ones that I'm at leaving there is not completely necessary. You technically could cover it up all the way till here. All right, and now I'm gonna make this redder color. So what I'm gonna do to the same color, I'm gonna use that as a base. So this is my color I just used for the ears. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit of red, mix it in. This would be my second color. Do you see it's nice and pink? And with this color, I'm gonna go on top here. Add a bit of it on both sides. And then I'm going to wash off my brush again. And with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm going to blend it. So do you see I'm going right in between the where the two colors connect with a clean, wet brush and remove that uh, line, that borderline in between of them. All right. Now I'm gonna add just a smidge more of color on top and you can do this one with a small brush. So to the same color I just used, I'm gonna add another smidge of red. You see, it gets even redder. And then you can add another smidge of brown. So if you have straight brown, do you remember that brown that we made, a regional dark brown? You can grab a smidge of it. If you don't have any, you can grab a smidge of black. That's okay too. Just a very, very small smidge. So it makes it a little darker. This is my color. Now adjust the very tops. And again, then I'm gonna grab my clean, slightly wet medium brush and I'm gonna smudge it. And ta-da, our ears are done on the inside. How is everyone doing with their ears? How are you guys? Let me know in comments, in chat here, say good to go or not good to go, need another minute. All that is good, I don't mind giving you more time. How is everyone doing? Good to go, yes, you guys are fast, speedy. Very fast. Yay, Lisa, that's great.
Aw, Noah and Claire, you're doing a great job, guys. And guys, all of you, thank you for painting with us today. I'm having lots of fun teaching you. I love doing this, so I really love that we can get like that in the COVID times and safely from our own homes to do something together. And especially Baby Yoda slash Grogo slash The Child. My accent is Russian. No problem. All right, guys, are we ready for the head? Are we ready for that green skin tone? All right. Now, we're gonna start by making a base green. So let me show you this one. Here, this color is our base green. Bye, Tony. Okay, so. Um, you can totally make other color. It doesn't have to be precisely that color, but I will be sticking with the same color. How you make it yellow, blue, and white. And I'll show you how to mix it. If you have pre-mixed green of similar color, absolutely, you could totally use it, no problem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with white. So I'm gonna grab quite a bit of white, put it on the side. So grab some white. Okay, now I'm gonna grab some blue, not a lot of it. I'll start little by little smidge. So I'll start with this amount. This looks like a good amount. Let's mix it up. Oh no, I need more. So little by little, I'll be adding blue until I get to the right shape. It's safer that way versus having grabbing a large chunk of color and not being sure whether that's going to be a good amount or you messed it up. So just little by little. I think another smidge and we should be good. So I'm aiming for a fairly light green in the end. Okay, so I think I can start mixing from here and then we'll see how it goes. So from this color, I'm going to start adding yellow little by little. So I'm grabbed a little smidge, edited it in. It turned more like a teal, right? Which is good. It means you're on the right track. Now, again, I'm going to grab a little smidge of yellow, add it in and see what it does. And I'm going to continue adding little by little this yellow until I get to the right shade of green. So that shade of green that I'm aiming for is, it's like almost a dark mint color. It's not very yellowy. It's more on a bluer side. So let me try a smidge. This is kind of close to what we're looking for. We could go a little darker if we wanted to. Do you see this color? And this color. Let's try it here, actually. Actually, it's pretty similar. You see, I just put it a blob here, and you can't really see which one is what. So I think that's a good color. But again, always good to try a little bit on your painting. You see, I put it a dot, so do that once you mix your color, before you commit to the color. Put a little dot on the face to see if you like that color. Because you may not like it. You may like it on a palette and then may not like it on a painting. So just try a little smidge and see how it is. For me, I think this color will work perfect. So I'm just gonna stick with this.
All right, now I'm gonna start coloring my Yoda. Well, Grogo Yoda child. And again, if you can go over your lines and you can still see them, like in my case, do you see they're still visible? They're hardly visible, but they are visible. Feel free to totally go right over them. You don't have to work around them. If you know that if you go over your lines, you're gonna lose them, then avoid your lines. Do not go over them if you're gonna lose them. I can still see my lines. They're hardly visible, but they are visible. Do you see? I can still see the nose, this line, the mouth, so. I'm going right over my lines. But again, if you feel like you can't do that, you're losing your lines, then just avoid them. Or if you feel like you can just add them later on on top again, then that's okay too. You can color in the whole thing flat. If you feel like, yeah, I remember where they were. It's not a big deal. I can add them on top. Uh, I have a photographic memory. Or if you can take a photo before you do this and then go ahead if you feel like you can totally add them on top again, no problem. Either one is fine. As far as names of green guys, it's totally up to you. Some companies name them differently. So don't go by name. Go by what looks similar. Because again, depending on what brand you use, one color could look uh, the same colors named, two colors named the same, could look totally different in two different brands. So just go by look. Yeah, you could totally do this in watercolor if you wanted to. Absolutely. All right, so now I'm gonna add the bottom parts of the ears. So do you remember how we added a little bit of, left a little bit of white and touch there? So now I'm gonna add my green. And I'm using medium brush for all this, but again, if it's easier for you to use, let's say, small brush, that's okay too. It doesn't have to be medium brush. That just what works better for me. And right away, as soon as i done it, I washed off my brush. And with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm going to smudge them, you see, to create that transparency. So again, I'm going to wash it again. Smudge it on my cloth. And go right over this edge to create a transparency here. Cool. 
And we're also going to color our hands in right away. So now I'm gonna use a small brush for this just because I find it's a bit hard to do with a medium brush since they're so tiny. Christopher, I can see that you're excited about the eyes. They are coming, I promise, but we cannot do them until we're done with all the green sections. Eyes are gonna be very last on this face. Summer. I am glad you're getting the paint right. It's a tricky color to mix. And guys, do you know how through uh, the whole jacket we started with one color, right? We did the whole base in one color and then we made slightly darker color and we did um, lots of areas shading in a slightly darker color and then we moved to the darkest color. So in the same way, we're gonna do the face. So we did our base color after that, we're gonna make slightly darker color and we'll do a little bit of shading in the slightly darker color. And after that, we'll make the darkest color and we'll do a little bit of shading in the darkest color as well. Very similarly to our jacket, just different colors. And again, once you have the green face, give me thumbs up in chat and we'll go as soon as I see a couple thumbs up and a couple of you saying that you're ready and you're good to go, we'll move on to our shading. And also it has to dry up just a little bit before we start shading it. It is easier to do this on sort of dry paint. It doesn't have to be 100% dry, but it better it when it's a little bit drier. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining guys. Good to go, good to go, that's great. Who else is good to go? Anyone else, ready, ready? Almost ready? Not yet? Good to go, awesome. Okay, wonderful. I see lots of reddies, which is a good sign. Now I'm gonna make slightly darker color. So for slightly darker color, I'm gonna use my green that I just used as a base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it. You see it gets darker, but bluer as well and a little bit of yellow, not too much. I think this should go well for the next one. But again, let me try it a little bit first. I think we could go darker potentially. So I think this is the color I'm gonna go with. Yep, 
¿ya? All right. Now, do you remember those lines that we added? We're going to start by adding lines right here. Do you remember uh, on top? So I'm going to go with my medium brush here. I'm going to put a line here. I'm going to put a line here. Then I'm going to wash off my brush right away, dry it on a cloth, and I'll smudge this line on the bottom. Oh, Henry, this is very interesting. I actually had no idea, but that's cool. Then we're going to do, uh, I'm going to switch to small brush now. The rest are going to be small details. And I'm going to go underneath here. And I'll add a line right here. I'm not going to be smudging this one. And then a line right here. And then a line actually closer to the eye itself. Zach, if you're a little behind, feel free to pause the video to give yourself enough time to catch up and then resume, or you can rewind back and rewatch the sections that are um, still ahead of you. YouTube gives you that ability, and guys, after it's fully recorded, the video will also stay on our YouTube page so you can rewatch it unlimited amount of times. So don't feel the pressure to have to keep up but to do it all in one shot. Now I'm gonna go on to my nose. I'm gonna add a bit of darkness for where I did before and going up to, just a little bit going up here. And feel free to smudge that if you want, I will. I'll wash off my brush. With a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm going to smudge it. Then we're going to move on to the top of the head. And do you remember those lines that we added? Um, we will add them again with a small brush and the same, the slightly darker green color. And a couple on top too. And if you want them smoother, you can smudge them, but if you don't want them smoother, you don't have to. Guys, I can see that you're super excited about the eyes but I cannot get to the eyes until we're done with this darker green part, which we are almost done with. 
And as soon as we finish, then we'll get on the ice. Couple more things in this color and then we'll move on the ice. So I'm gonna go onto the ears now. So I'll add some right here with a small brush. See, I'm almost adding like flick on the outline. And of course, I'm gonna smudge that too. So I'm gonna wash my medium brush. I'm gonna smudge that a bit. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I know, he looks like a ghost eye. I know. He's pretty funny. Thanks, Gabriella. Yes, I'm so glad you love how yours is coming out. That is awesome. Now I'm gonna go on to the mouth and again. So the nose, do you remember those lines? I'm gonna add them again in the dark green. I'm gonna add my mouth again in the dark green. Not dark green, the same green that we're just using now. And I'll put this underneath the cheeks. You see I'm connecting this to the cheeks and I will smudge that so it's not gonna be as, um, crazy standing out. I'm gonna smudge all this, but I wanna quickly add all that right away. So do you see I darkened up all that? And now before it dries up, I'm gonna grab my clean medium brush and I'm gonna smudge that. So here, to blend it into the cheek. Do you see now it's gradual, right? It looks like the cheek is actually coming out. You see a lot of dimension here. Guys, if you're just joining us now, the video will stay on our YouTube channel pretty much forever, so you can rewatch it anytime. All right, when you guys have this, give me thumbs up and then we'll move on the ice. We'll do the base for the ice in black. Then we'll go back to our green because there's another layer of green we need to add. And then by the time we add another layer of green, our black ice is gonna be dry. So we're gonna go there with brown and then we'll add white highlight on the whole thing. We'll add white on a green and white on the ice because all of that, it needs to be done in layering with a little bit of drying in between. Good to go, yes. Who else is good to go? Who is ready?
So this is unfinished one. This is finished one. Get in there, guys. Get in there. Awesome. I see a couple thumbs up. That's great, guys. Darlene, that is funny. And yes, 100%. Who doesn't like a good child, baby Yoda slash Grogu? All right. So, guys, now I'm going to grab Street Black. I'll go right into the circles. I'm going to use my medium brush, but whichever brush works for you, you can use that. Doesn't it look even creepier now with just black? I think it does. Thank you. All right, so I added black onto the eyes. Now I'm gonna need to wait for it to dry because it's not dry yet, so we can't add details on it. So we'll have to wait until it dries up before we can add the details on our black eyes. But in the meantime, do you remember how there were corners? I'm going to add those in a light gray. So very, very light gray. You can alternatively do it even in white. Either one is fine. I prefer light gray just so it's not as crazy bright. There is a corner here and a corner at the back. I know he looks a little creep. And that's okay. It's perfectly normal for him to look this way right now. So again, once you guys have this, give me thumbs up. And then I'll show you what's next. And next we're gonna move back to our face because our face is not in the darkest yet. We still have a darker color to go. It'll make everything more defined and we'll outline our eyes more. And then once um, the eyes dry up a little, we're gonna add some brown and some white to them. And that's what's gonna make him look more alive versus just black, flat eyes. That's a weird look for sure.
All right, I see first thumbs up, that's great. Um, when I get a couple more thumbs up, I'm gonna show you next couple steps on our face. I know it is definitely starting to look like it should look. That's what it is, every painting, it always looks like what it should look. It always looks pretty bad, first 80% of the painting. And then on the last 20%, that's where it comes together and starts looking really, really good. Good to go. Awesome. All right, guys. So now I'm going to move on to even darker green. And... Now I'm going to do this to the same green we just used. This is the green. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, of course, to make it darker. A little bit of yellow. You see it's darker green. And to this color, I'm going to add just a tiniest smidge of black. Do you see? And with this color and a small brush, I am going to start around the eyes again. So I'm gonna go right around the eyes, around the actual eye, not on the top first, but right here, just a little line. on both of the eyes. After that, I'm gonna go on top. So right here, I'm gonna add a little bit of this couple of brush strokes. Just on that part. If you wanna smudge them, you can. If you don't want to, that's okay too. I think I will smudge mine a little with my medium brush. Same way that we've done with other colors. Yeah, he does look like an alien. Funny little guy. And a little bit underneath as well. See, just a little bit. Don't use too much paint on your brush here, just a touch. Or feel free to smudge it a little as well. And I'll add just a touch of that on top too, on this head wrinkles, but just a little. Do you see I'm not doing the full on outline? I'm doing a smidge here, smidge there. Then I'm going to move on to the nose. Let some right here. On the face. 
Sorry, the mouth. A little bit underneath the cheeks. A little bit here and underneath the chin. And again, if you guys need to maybe pause this video while it's close up and just take your time on shading the face, absolutely feel free to do that. There's no need to rush through it. And now I'm going to go on to my ears. So I'm going to start by just adding a little bit of an outline. Not full on, just like a flick here, flick there. Kind of outline. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes on this darker green, and then we'll move on to um, a little bit of black. So we'll add just a little bit of black. And guys, just so you know, the eyes are not done yet. We still have to add brown and white, and that's what's gonna make them really, really pop. Once you guys have it, give me thumbs up and I'll show you the black sections. And again, as you can see, he is getting there. Thumbs up, that's great. Got some thumbs up, that's awesome.
Yay. All right. Now, we're gonna grab a tiny smidge of black on our small brushes. And with this tiny smidge of black, first thing I'm gonna do it oops, that's blue, that's not black, okay. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust a little bit on around the nose here. So right here, right here. Just like the tiniest smidge ever. Now I'll add just a little bit on the mouth as well. So on this part. And then I'm gonna go underneath the chin and I'm actually gonna darken it up here. And then I'm gonna grab clean brush. So I'll wash off the same small brush, dry it up on a cloth. And with this brush, I'm gonna blend it. So there's a smooth transition between the green and black to have the darkest section underneath the face. And then we can finally move to our eyes and add more details onto our eyes. And the color I'm gonna go with is gonna be light brown. So I'm gonna wash off my brush, grab a little bit of brown and mix it with a little bit of white to make fairly light brown. And with this color, I'm gonna put a circle inside the eye. So let me show you. Do you see? And it's a bit more faded on top. So what I'm doing is like I'm just adding a bit less paint as I go on the upper part there. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. A bit more paint as I do the bottom part of the circle and a bit less paint as I go higher up. All right, after this, we're gonna move on to white highlights on the face and the eyes and everywhere else. And you can do this either with um, medium brush or the small brush, whichever works best. I think I'm gonna go with a small brush. So I'm gonna grab my small brush, a little bit of white paint. And I'll start, I actually wouldn't mind watering down paint here. So feel free to water it down. And I'll add some right here. Mm -hmm. 
Just a bit of highlights. Some on the ears too. A little bit on the nose. You can do some on top of the lips. No, that's not for the inner eye. That's more like a reflection or maybe a design of the eye. A little bit here, a little bit here. You see all the parts that are coming out, right? All the parts that are sticking out a bit, you can add a bit of highlight on. And of course, I'm gonna add highlights on the eyes. So the first highlight I'm gonna add with a really watered down white. So it's gonna be a bit of a transparent white and you will see. So I'm gonna add a line right here. Look, a line. Now I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'll smudge this line up. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Same line. And then I'll smudge it up with a clean, slightly wet brush. Now again, I'm gonna grab a little bit more of watered down white. I'll add a little right here, a little right here, right here. And now I'm gonna grab straight white, so not watered down white. Now I'll add a big dot and a small dot there. And I'll add the big dot, a small dot here too. And now do you see? Doesn't he look cute? And his eyes come to life, right? Because now you have the shape of the eye. It doesn't just look like a flat black nothing. It looks like it's actually a rounded eye that is reflecting light. If you want to have more glare, you absolutely can. Wherever you want, really, if you want more glare. Glare is good for the eyes. All right, guys, we still have actually one thing to do. One, one thing only. We're going to add um, more like, let me show you actually the difference. So do you see? This is almost finished. This is finished. We need to add those circles on the sides and we are done after that but i'm going to give you guys another minute to finish the eyes first and while you're waiting for uh while i am waiting for you guys to finish up the eyes so we can call so we can move on to this circle on the sides i just want to give you some information first once you finish if you want to share your paintings with us please do i'm going to post link in the comments right now to where you can do that. You don't have to search around, you can just click there and it will bring you exactly to the place where you can post, post your uh, pictures for everyone to see. That would be the best place to do that would be the Facebook event for this painting. 
because then everyone else who participated can also see how they turned out, not just us. And we would love to see it absolutely, but I also know a lot of other people would love to see it as well. So please feel free to do that. All right, let me post it in chat here quickly. So I commented right now in chat, you will see it. There is a comment that has a link just click on it, it will bring you on our Facebook page on event um, page. So there underneath the comments, under any post, there's a post on top and a discussion. Under that post, there's a commenting that's enabled. You can uh, take a photo and post it right there and we would love to see it and everyone else who participated, I'm sure would love to see it as well. Now, another thing guys, if this is your first time painting with us and you enjoyed it and you had fun, Feel free to just subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of uh, events here already, and we will be doing one or two more for you every week. However, we also do um, $10 ticket Zoom events with a smaller groups where you can actually have ability to show your photo in a real time, if some of you are interested in that. And we also have some recordings on our website, which I am also going to put a link in comments here. So feel free to check them out. All right, I just posted the link to our website where you can find lots and lots of tutorials. We have, I would say about 70 Seven zero tutorials on our website, which is a lot. So feel free to check them out and see if there's anything that catches your eye. And we actually to doing a buy one, get one free deal today until midnight. So if you buy a ticket to one of our Zoom events, which is smaller group events, where you can actually real time show your painting, get more assistance, one-on-one -on -one assistance from the artist, uh, you will get one of the recordings from our website for free. So you will see that deal on our Facebook. Oh, I'll post the link to that too, so you guys don't have to search around. But that deal expires midnight tonight. Yes, little bubbles in the background is what we're doing next. All right, how is everyone doing? Are we good to move on the little bubbles? Do we need a bit more time? Where are you guys at? All right, let's do the bubbles then. The bubbles are going to be done in three different colors. The first one white, second one green, third one green mixed with black. So we're going to start with the lightest one and you're going to do them with a medium brush. So you're going to grab your medium brush, a little bit off of white clean, make sure it's nice and clean. A little bit off white on it. And we're gonna start adding circles. You can add them somewhere on the sides here. I probably wouldn't recommend going over his face, so just avoid the face. But going over the body or the hands is totally fine. So I'm gonna add a circle. You see, I'm adding circle, not a very white circle, so, so white, transparent. And then I take my finger and I smudge it. And it turns even more transparent. So that's what you want. And make some bigger, some bigger, some smaller. You don't want all of them the same size.
just the trick here with this is don't use too much paint. You want your paint to be very transparent. So just use a tiny touch of paint or water down your paint alternatively. And you can also smudge with a brush or a finger. I find that finger is the easiest to do. Yes, absolutely, guys. The video will stay up on our YouTube forever. So if you want to do this at another time, go for it. No problem at all. Wendy, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. All right, I'm going to move to my next color here, guys, and it's going to be green. So I'm going to grab some yellow, some blue, mix them up, make fairly dark green, so just more blue than yellow. And now I'm going to add a couple circles, not many in this color. So I don't need many. I just need a couple. And again, same thing. Either don't use too much paint on your brush or really smudge them with your finger. So they don't look like cutouts from colored paper. You need them to be somewhat transparent. So I see a question about diluted white. What is happening to you? Tell me more about what you would not, my wouldn't make sense on my palette if I show you. It just looks like white. So you wouldn't see the difference. Just tell me what is going wrong with it and I'll tell you how to fix it. So that was um, green. So to answer your comments, your bubbles are turning tan. That's okay. Actually, it's compatible color. As long as your bubbles are in compatible colors, it's all good. You can technically pick any color from the background and your bubbles in that color and they will look really good. Just do some lighter colors and some darker colors and that will look perfect. Tan is definitely a compatible color here, so it's all good. And now I'm going to do darker ones. So to the same green I just used, which is just normal dark green, as you can see, I'm going to add a tiny smidge of black. And that would be my final color. So again, I'm adding circles and I'm smudging them right away. If your, if your paint seems too heavy and doesn't blend well, you need way more water in it. Just continue adding water little by little. Mine is pretty watered down. I would say it's very liquid. It's like ink. If you ever use the ink that you write with, that's pretty much the consistency. It's not exactly like water. It's a little bit um, more thick, thicker than water, but it is pretty liquid. You wouldn't be able to just paint with it. If you did a large brush stroke with it, it will drip down. That's how watered down mine is. So I would say if you, that's what you're struggling with, just continue adding little by little. So add a smidge of water, try it. Add a smidge of water, try it until you get the right consistency. If you get it once, you would know the consistency. So every next time you will need to do the same technique, you will know the consistency. It really is all the trial and error. You really just kind of have to try a couple times until you get it. And then I'm going to flick a couple brush strokes from the bottom here with the same darker green color to darken up this 
spot. Yes, it likely is just too thick. All right, now I'm gonna move on this side and I'll add a couple of those circles as well. And again, a couple of brush strokes. Do you see I'm flicking them from the bottom up? And final, final, final step. I am going to wash off my medium brush, grab my small brush and a little bit of white paint and I'm going to add just a few dots on the sections in white. Ta-da! And once you guys have all this beauty, feel free to sign it. So choose a good spot, wherever that may be, and put your name or your initials or your signature, something that represents you. So I'm going to do this right here. Thank you guys. I really like how it looks too. I think it looks really, really cute. Now I'm going to hang out with you for a bit, even though there are no more teaching here to do. And I'll answer all the questions that you may have. So feel free to write them in chat while I'm here. Um, again, thank you all for joining us, guys. This is pretty much all. There is no more steps for me here to teach you. It's uh, right in between, as we promised, between two and a half and three hours. We're two hours, 47 minutes. So yay, you are amazing by making through. I know it's a lot of work. It was hard painting, but you did it. So great job, everyone. If you would love to show it to us, we would love to see it. Would never say no to that. Yay, Nora. I'm glad to hear this. Yes, and guys, if you had fun, feel free to take um, photos and post them. You can even give us a good review on Facebook. We would never say no to that too. Or just a nice comment. All those things um, really support us artists. Or if you want to send me a tip, I will never say no to that. You don't have to. It's very optional. But again, if that's what you want to do, I wouldn't stop you. I will actually post... Um, the way you can tip me in chat here, and you can do that through e-transfer or through PayPal, whatever works for you guys. All right, let me do that now. Yes, I just posted it in chat there. Um, of course, no obligation. And again, everything helps. It just a share or a like or a comment also is very, very helpful. All right, guys, no more steps here. Does anyone have questions before I go? Just so I can answer all your questions while I am here. Done, yes, that's good. Look, I have two Baby Yodas now. And I know his name is not a Baby Yoda, but that's okay. He's the Yoda kind, the Baby Yoda kind. Yeah, you guys are very welcome. 
All right, if no one has any questions for me, again, thank you all for joining us and I hope to see you at more of our events. Bye guys.